Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. My name is Ron Frost. I'm a licensed practitioner here at the center. And I want to begin by greeting you with the word namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word, which means the divinity within me recognizes, honors, and blesses the divinity within you. Now, whether you're here for the very first time or you're a longtime follower of us on Facebook and on YouTube, we're simply here to help you connect with a deeper feeling of, of the God of your understanding and discovering what you already know, the truth that's already within you. Now, each week when we get together, we like to read our vision and our mission out loud. Feel free to join your voice with mine. The vision is now on your screen. Our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And now here's our mission. We teach science of mind principles and other life affirming spiritual truths. We explore, learn, grow, connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. And we celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. And now I invite you to join me in pausing and taking a moment to go within. I encourage you to get comfortable, to relax, to take a breath and let go of any of the worried thoughts of the day or the week that's already behind us. And come fully present in this now moment. As Bob Teasdale and Jay Poindexter Take us away with a Christy Snow song, I Surrender. I fall into the 
arms of love. I surrender. I surrender into the one infinite miracle, the arms of love, the arms of peace, the arms of joy. I surrender into that thing that we know as spirit, divine source creator, or simply the word God. It is that which creates the many magnificent miracles and manifestations within all time and space, within this universe and beyond. And I know with complete certainty that that life, that consciousness is the same thing that I am. It lives within me and through me and is the manifestation of my life. It's even in these words in this now moment of this prayer and meditation. And as I know that this presence exists as me in my life, that I have peace, I have joy, I have love. And although there may be times of uncertainty, of a feeling of disarray or disconnection or even separation. I know that the truth is behind it all is complete unity of oneness and that I stand and walk in the light of this one presence as perfectly whole, as healthy, joyful, conscious expression of light and love. And with that, I surrender into gratitude, grateful for this truth. And I release these words into the law of mind, knowing they are done. And so it is. And now it's my honor and pleasure to introduce our spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wilson. Reverend Karen has been that voice of strength and those heartfelt stories and inspirational messages of spiritual truth that she shares every Sunday. So it's so wonderful to have her here this morning. And her message is titled, Having Fun with the Divine. But before we hear from Reverend Karen, here's Jay and Bob once again with a beautiful song called, I Hope You Dance. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Get your fill to eat but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance Never settle for the path 
of least resistance. Living might mean taking chances, but they're worth taking. Loving might be a mistake, but it's worth making. Don't let some help at heart leave you bitter. When you come close to selling out, reconsider. Give the heavens above more than a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. You still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, dance. Jay and Bob. I love those words. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder and may you never take one single breath for granted. Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance and when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. I hope you dance. I know sometimes in life at those times when things look bleak and hopeless, that sounds crazy, and it seems impossible. And yet, you know, we always have within us a spark of life, of joy that wants to express. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching, said it this way. Today is about waking up to the spark, the amazing nature of our divine essence, this infinite aliveness flowing through us as us. Wow. Now, sometimes, depending on what's going on in our lives, it may, it may seem so tiny, that little spark. We think it's gone, but it can never be extinguished. The presence of the infinite in, as, and through us is, well, it's infinite. And it always wants to dance, to express as joy in countless ways, uniquely yours and mine. There's a passage in the Bible that says, God's joy knows no bounds. God rejoices over you with singing. And in the Hebrew, uh, it actually joy means to be exhilarated to the points of dancing in a whirlwind. Wow. Joy and dancing in the Bible. And I want you to know this. Your dancing, your joy, in no way takes away from someone else's nor does it diminish someone else's pain, as though you're ignoring it, not at all. In fact, the vibrational energy of your dancing, of your joy, ripples outward and uplifts the vibration of those around you and beyond. I'll say it's a God thing. In the words of Friedrich Nietzsche, 
I would believe only in a God who could dance. <laughs> How about that? I love it. So my title today is Dancing with the Divine. Well, not quite. It's having fun with the divine. But first, let's check in with each other. <laughs> I'm so happy knowing you're there. How are you doing? Let's stay in touch as 2022 unfolds already. It's been quite a year. But just know that I affirm for you a year of vibrant wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. You are an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. So thank you. So as I said, my title today is Having Fun with the Divine. Now the theme being explored by many of our Centers for Spiritual Living this year, as I've told you before, is Living Everyday Wonder. And this month's theme that we're all sharing is Play. So let's play, having fun with the divine. You know, there was a time in my life when I believed that <clears throat> that, that would be quite an insult to God as I perceived God to be. But now I realize that the very nature of the one, of spirit of God, by whatever name, is pure, it's pure joy and aliveness. Because the truth is, as was declared by the modern day mystic Pierre Thierry de Chardin, joy is the most infallible sign of the existence of God. So as I reflected on this title, having fun with the divine, I was, I was reminded of actually one of my messages from a year, a few years ago. It was titled, so make a mistake, please. That's right, so to make a mistake, please. Wouldn't it be great when we make mistakes, fumble the ball, take, take a wrong turn? You get the idea. If we could consider these differently, rather than being caught up in dismay and self-criticism, what if we could consider them and, and what to do about them as an opportunity for having fun with the divine? Think about it. And, and maybe that would relieve us of our often paralyzing fear of making mistakes or being less than perfect. The truth is, spirit is perfection, even in what appears to be imperfection. It's a freeing concept, isn't it? Life isn't a dress rehearsal. The curtain's up and we are on stage. It's not a pass-fail proposition either. There's no, no prescribed one perfect way to do life. In fact, Dr. Kennedy Schultz, my first religious science minister, used to open every Sunday service by declaring, such is the nature of life, that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. You are that opportunity and so am I. I loved starting every Sunday with that and reminding him it, myself of it through the week. Because in all our striving to be perfect, just maybe we miss out on the real juiciness, the fun, and actually the innate perfection of just plain living life or letting life live us. Head on, full out, dancing, warts and all. <laughs> Listen to these wise words from the ancient Sufi poet Rumi. He said, there are two kinds of intelligence. One is acquired as a child in school, memorizes facts and concepts from books and from what the teacher says. With such intelligence, you rise in the world, getting ranked ahead or behind others in regard to your competence in retaining information. But there is another kind of intelligence, one already complete inside of you. It's like a spring overflowing its container. It's a freshness in the center of your chest. This intelligence is fluid. It is a fountainhead from within you moving outward. He's saying that it is life by its very nature wanting to express through and as you and me. I think it's reminding us to do as improv, our, um, improv author Patricia Madsen said in her book, Improv Wisdom. Don't prepare, just show up and jump into the world of oops with both feet. 
just make it up as you go. I mean, that's what life does. Now, as I think about this, it occurs to me that this requires a bit of surrender on our part. And that's why I asked Jay and Bob to sing that beautiful chant you heard earlier by Christy Snow. I surrender and I fall into the arms of love, of joy, of you can fill in the blanks. I surrender. Because this, be, this being willing to make a mistake, to jump into the world of oops, to have fun with the divine, with life, well, it invites us to surrender our need to control everything. <laughs> like the juggler who says that the hardest thing is not how to juggle, but how to let the balls drop. Surrender. Now, I have a couple caveats. Of course, there are areas in life where our planning and uh, preparing and control are very important. And about mistakes, I'm certainly not advocating thoughtless, dangerous carelessness. But consider this, that if we're too afraid to make a mistake, we miss opportunities. We stay stuck in indecision. We procrastinate and, well, we really miss living. We miss having fun with the divine. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, I'd like to jump into the world of oops, but I don't know how. <laughs> Neither do I, but you know what? Your heart knows. Your heart knows how to do that. Many wise spiritual masters through the ages have said in one way or another, the heart is wiser than the intellect. Here's what one man said, after advancing to the highest possible scientific discovery, the human being will finally confess that the heart is a center of knowledge, that the heart is wiser than the intellect. Or putting it this way, if I listen with my heart, I don't have to think so hard with my head. <laughs> Our heart knows, it knows how to have fun with the divine. That's its nature. Now, one way this can show up is when we relinquish the need to be the expert and instead tap into our beginner's mind, our beginner's mind. After all, in the beginner's mind, there are endless possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. Of course, I'm not entirely dismissing expertise, but Sometimes the need to be an expert can stifle our inner joy, our fun, and even our creativity. There was a poet, a man named William Stafford, who said he used to get up at 4 a.m. every day and write a poem. And one of his friends said, surely you can't write a good poem every day, Bill. What, what happens then? And he replied, then I just lower my standards. Lower my standards, get the poem written, <laughs> live my life. Dance. Deepak Chopra said this, I love it, and I've read it many times and looked at it many times in my life as a reminder. Nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease and carefree abandon. This is the principle of least action and no resistance. And when we learn this lesson from nature, we easily fulfill our desires. That is having fun with the divine. So as we're surrendering the need to control, the fear of making mistakes, here's one more thing about being free to have fun with the divine. Embrace the wobble. What's the wobble? Well, remember when you first learned to ride a two-wheel bike? <laughs> you didn't let that beginner's wobble deter you, did you? I know I didn't. Because we knew what fun was ahead of us. And as a matter of fact, life is a constant wobble. Have you noticed? I mean, life is always about uncertainty and unpredictability. And the only certainty is that things will change. There will be surprises, curve balls. Life is always in flux. Our footing is always changing. And of course, it's very natural to grab for security and stability and even to sink those, seek those as a destination. But, you know, even if we find that, it'll eventually disintegrate. 
because there will be speed bumps and unexpected detours. And in these times, we can tend to lose sight of the divine presence that is joyfully in and all around us. I tell you personally, when this happens in my life, I get in touch with my spiritual practitioner. And I so recommend this to you. Reach out to one of our amazing spiritual practitioners. My practitioner guides and supports me in seeing what I can't see. Guides and supports me in looking past whatever has me feeling upset or anxious, frustrated, fearful, you name it. Guides me to recognizing again my inner spark of joy, my divine essence. And I always, always come away from those sessions uplifted, clear, and in a better place and ready to take on my day. What a difference it makes to take time to meet with someone who can know the truth, know my truth for me when I lose sight of it. And that's what our professional licensed spiritual practitioners are trained to do. It's absolutely priceless. Now, Alan Watts wrote a book called The Wisdom of Insecurity. Yep. And it says that life is about balancing, yes, balancing, rather than about somehow being perfectly balanced. Aha. Uh -huh. Life is about balancing. All life long, consciously and subconsciously, we're engaged in balancing. So realizing this, why not embrace the wobble? Have fun with it. And when you and I do this in the process, you know, we do inevitably hone our inner balancing skills our resilience, our flexibility. This is a stuff of survival as, and of surviving, actually, of thriving, actually. It's like a tree in the windstorm. The flexible, really resilient ones survive. We can even find this to be exhilarating, this teetering and wobbling and then balancing, if we look at it as having fun with the divine. I'm going to close with a wonderful, wonderful statement by Ernest Holmes, kind of the foundation of all of this. He said, there is a laughter of God, let's laugh it. There is a joy of the universe, let's experience it. We should accept happiness as our divine birthright today. If you do this, you may even find yourself saying, as Jay is going to sing, I can't help it. God makes me want to sing. Now that is truly having fun with the divine. I'll see you soon. I can't help it. God makes me want to sing. No one less or more We've all got the same treasure in store I'm loving every living thing I can't help it God makes me want to sing I can't help it God makes me want to sing I'm leaving in my guiding
breeze With the wind at my back And a smile upon my face I'm living my dreams a little more each day And it keeps getting easier to find my way I'm rising to a higher place I can't help it God makes me want to sing I can do us anything, yeah. I can't help it. God makes me want to sing. Oh, yeah. I can't help it. God makes me want to sing. Thank you, Jay and Bob, for that wonderful song. And thank you, Reverend Karen, for that beautiful, uplifting message, having fun with the divine. And so here at the Center for Spiritual Living, we want you to know that we are available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer support through prayer, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we really appreciate the financial gifts and support of us so we can continue to offer support for you. There are three simple ways to share your gift. On your screen, you can see our website where you can select the donate button which allows you to contribute via PayPal or credit card, or you can mail a check to the address shown here on our website, or set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. The website is www.cslsarasota.com. And now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand and place it over your heart blessing it and share it and know with me, my gift goes forth to heal, heal, bless, and to prosper. And the divine flow returns it to me multiplied abundantly. And now please join me in our offering affirmation shown on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Would you like prayer support? Have a request? On our website at www.cslsarasota.com, you will see the green prayer request button, which allows you to send your prayer requests. Our four licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Sean Scanlon, Nicole Leeds, Jim Grove, and myself, Stand by, ready to know, and affirm spiritual truth with and for you, no matter what the situation. We are also available for spiritual coaching sessions by appointment. We offer these opportunities to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that eclipses your problem or challenging issue. For more information, Click the staff tab on the left-hand side of the website and then select practitioners. Would you like news of upcoming events? Sign up for our weekly email newsletter here on our website or click our Facebook link. One more reminder, so popular every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. are our spiritual living circles via Zoom, and they're open to all. These are facilitated by our spiritual practitioner, Jim Grove. These, this is a great time to connect in community. These circles are informal, inspiring, thought-provoking, and free. Email Jim at the address 
here on your screen, and he will send you this week's Zoom link, discussion questions, and a copy of the Science of Mind article to be discussed. And now as we conclude this sacred time together, let us set our intention to move forward into the day and week ahead in peace and love. And now I invite you to join in in singing our closing song together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. The words can be seen on your screen. Thank you for being with us this morning and have a wonderful week, everyone. on earth.